So now let's talk about manifold learning. When we talk about manifold learning, we are dealing with what we call the manifold hypothesis. It's the idea that in a given high dimensionality space, in fact, the data are based on some lower dimensionality manifold. So basically some kind of subspace that is just put in that high dimensionality space, but you know, we don't, we, the structure is, is of a lower dimensionality. So the manifold learning aims at extracting that lower dimensionality space to get the points. And uh, it's, it's considered as a nonlinear method for dimensionality reduction. Compared to PCA, PCA is a linear method. So basically it's, it is making, making a linear transformation, a mapping from D dimensions to K dimensions using some simple linear transformation. Why with manifold learning, we may use much more uh, complex transformation or, or models to extract the manifold in that high dimensionality space. And a classical example from in the literature to illustrate this is the Swiss roll. You know, you may know this is kind of a, it is something we can find in groceries, a kind of cheap cake that is a roll as a spiral, basically with some cake and some cream in it. So uh, we have this Swiss roll in 3D here, and we can see that this, uh, this manifold is basically covering some kind of space here, but all around it and in between there is nothing. So basically we can capture this fold, this Swiss roll, this manifold in 3D and unroll it in 2D to get that thing here. So basically we have something that is better distributed with, with some hole in the middle, but that's fine. So the manifold here is in 2Ds, two, two uh, but it is uh, organized, it is in a 3D space and we can get something much more complex in the high dimensionality. One approach for that is what we call multidimensional scaling, MDS. So the idea is to find a projection to a space of lower dimensionality while preserving as much as possible the value of the distance. We don't look at the position, we look at the distances between each pair of points of the training set. So we want to map this while preserving the distance relation between the points. So we, we have different approaches. One is Salmon's method, which aim at determining the nonlinear projection G, which is minimizing this criteria. So basically the criteria is to say that, is to, is to achieve something like the distance. So this is the projection of XT, this is the projection of XS. So uh, we have this distance between these two and we have the distance in the original space. So, so we want this, two distances, so the distance in the transform space versus the distance in the original space to be minimized. We want this to be equal to close as zero as possible. So we have this squared divided by the, the original distance. So we are kind of weighting this according to the distance we have right now. So, so uh, if we are able to make a projection where the distances in the new, in the nonlinear projection is preserved in the, in the original dimension, that's great. And in fact, function G is making a nonlinear projection in a possibly much lower dimensionality space. So X may be like in big D, high dimensionality, but G will give us something in, in 2Ds, for example. So the point is to learn the parameters theta of our model G that will minimize this error. So it's kind of what we saw so far so the model G can be many things. You know, we can use the models that we have uh, in our in our in the course here. We can we can basically uh, make use, for example, of polynomial polynomial regression, kernel regression, neural network is quite common. So we make use of a neural network here to learn that mapping from D to K, and using that error criterion as as a, as measurements to 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 minimize. And the distance uh, can be arbitrary, it doesn't have to be Euclidean, even though Euclidean is interesting, even though maybe with some gradient based approaches, we may want to get this de derivative, want to be able to get the derivative. So Euclidean distance may be nice for that, but it's not an obligation. We can get uh, anything that, that we want. The point is to look at uh, ensuring that the distance somehow is preserved uh, before and after the mapping. So an example of that is to say, let, let's pick up, I would say, several cities. We have like a bunch of many cities in the US and three cities in Canada, Vancouver, Winnipeg, Saskatoon. Basically, you know, these, these are the, the yellow ones here and the other ones are corresponding to other cities in the US. 
So if you have some knowledge of US geography, you can see that yeah, it seems to be seem to be the US. We have Texas here, we have Florida here, we have New England there, and, and so on. And this is achieved without using the real positions. We just give the distance. So you know when we have some kind of map giving us the the distance uh, between two cities in terms of driving. So we only use this distance, for example, the, the, the road distance. So it's not the, the, the flight distance, it's really just the road distance based on the roads. And, and, and so we have this, this road distance between each city and we want to map this into uh, a 2D plot, which is that one. And that is working well. That is corresponding to something that looks like the US. Another approach is what we call TSNE. So TSNE is basically to make a projection of each data in a low dimensionality space by preserving the neighborhood of the original space. So that thing is pretty, quite useful for visualization. TSNE is not good. In fact, it's not advised to be used for reducing dimensionality for training classifiers. But in terms of visualization, that's a really nice tool. So uh, the idea is to determine the probability to be the neighbors between the pairs of the set. So we have uh, some, uh, so, so we have some probability of saying that, well, XJ is the neighbor of XI, for example. And this is given by this thing. So basically we have this, this model here for the neighborhood probability. And we have also the probability of picking up that neighbor according to a normal loss center on XI. So this is another probability. So we want to match these two. These are the probabilities that the two points are neighbors. And then we are adjusting some kind of sigma in there to, 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 to make it fit, to make it work well. So the idea is to determine the probability of being neighbor between the pairs in low dimensionality space. So XT is the projection of, ZT is the projection of XT in the low dimensionality space. And, and as such, you know, we've got the probability of them to be neighbors. So we are looking at the probability of being neighbors in the original space in X. And now we are looking at the probability of being neighbors in the low dimensionality space. And we assume some students laugh for that. And, and the point is to, learn a projection of the points in low dimensionality in order to minimize the divergence. So we say we have the distribution of the neighbor probability, the probability of being neighbor in the original space. We have the distribution of the probability of being neighbor in the transform space. We want these two distributions to be well aligned. We want to make them aligned. We want to, 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 to minimize the divergence between these distributions. And this is based on KL, Kobler, Lee Black divergence that we are using here as a criterion to optimize. And then we can learn a neural network based on that criterion that will make the mapping to ensure that the neighbor probability is preserved in terms of statistical distribution as much as possible. So for comparing, I would say different approaches for manifold learning, we know we have here a selection of 64 dimensional digits that are set. So we have all these digits. If we are using some random projection of that space in 2D, you know, we've got something that is quite random. If we are making use of multi-dimensional scaling, we see something that is quite current. You know, we see that the classes, we have the zero here. We have the four here, I think. We have the, the three here and so on. So it's, without having the labels, it is still kind of preserved. We are able to to learn something interesting. And with this, and it's even better, you know, we have really clear clusters without using the labels where the projection is able to differentiate between these different uh, characters that we are using as input. 